So now that we've got them all charged up, what we need to do is we need to actually activate the craft and you need to register it to yourself. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to get the battery into the craft. Now, um, if you are powering on indoors, um, I'll be honest, I'm a bit old school and I would recommend taking the props off. So I would normally cover this later in the video of putting the props on, but as two of the props come on the craft when you get it, uh, what you do to take them off, it's quite simple, but you just, see the prop is actually quite springy, so it pushes down like that. You just push it, and then turn it and then the prop will come off. So do that one and we do that one. It's just because we're going to have it switched on right under feet. There's no reason why the uh, motors would start up but we're just not going to take the chance. But another thing we need to do before we power it on uh, is there's a clamp in at the back of the gimbal which is very important it needs to be taken off otherwise you're going to end up overheating the motor. So you have this rubber cover which goes over the glaze section. Uh, now Lots of controversy online. You can either leave this on or off. If you leave it on, it's good for protection. If you take it off, um, obviously you need to be very careful because obviously the gimbal which moves is a bit exposed. If you leave it on, issue you can have is that um, if the sun hits at a funny angle, you can get kind of looks like little solar flares in your image. So to take it off, there's just a little clip at the back. Just push that off it comes and what we need to do is we need to remove this gimbal clamp at the back this is like a little transit clamp uh, so if you're traveling with it you clip that back on stops the gimbal shaking out you just pinch it in with your fingers and out it comes now there's a tiny little tab I don't know if you can see it in there see the little yellow thing it's the sticker it's a sticker on top of the gimbal if I actually move the gimbal I don't know if I can do this to let you see but if I tilt it forward there's a tiny sticker there so if you really want you can take that off but to be honest with you if you it hasn't even come off properly but if you can um, if you're not bothered about it you can actually leave it ooh, still on me you can actually leave it on so we need to take that off because when the when the uh, when the Mavic powers up for the first time and um, it's going to want to move around and if you have the gimbal clamps in there then it's going to cause problems but what we can do we can actually clip that back on and at least that way nothing can actually touch it okie dokie so what we're also going to need is our device now i am going to for activation purposes i'm actually going to use my ipad mini because it's going to be a little bit easier for you to see and also it's got a, a matte matte screen on it which will make it a little bit easier for the camera to see so what you need to do is you need to download the DJI Go app. So if you've got, um, if, you, if you're on iOS as I am, just go to the uh, App Store, type in uh, uh, DJI Go and you will find it. Same if you're on Android, go to the Android Store and uh, download it. Sadly, it's not available on Windows devices, as in, you know, Windows phones, etc. So what we need to do, if we just unlock, whoops, give me one moment. Okay, so once you've got your app downloaded, uh, we just want to click on the app. Now, um, as I'm going to be using a separate device, now normally the way it would work is you have your Mavic controller and you have your phone. So to connect the two together, you would simply open up the little jaws like that. And as you can see in there, you've got a little mini lightning cable. Now it does come with an Android one as well. So if you run an Android, uh, you'll need to basically pop that one out there and use the Android one instead. But I'm just, as I use iOS myself, I'm just gonna go with it. So uh, it's quite simple though. You just slide that into there and then that just moves into there. And then you can just clip it all in place like that and then that is ready to go so it's connected to the device but as I say we're going to use my iPad mini so I'm just going to pull that out and what I'm going to do is as you can see you've got a USB socket in there so I'm just going to connect into there and then connect into there you can in fact um, you can actually believe it or not the jaws will actually open up large enough for the iPad mini to get in there uh, but you need to what you need to do is you need to take that cable out and I just don't want to take it out just now so I'm just going to do this kind of remotely as it were so uh, so the first thing we need to do obviously we need to power on the controller so you've got the wee power button there if you used to DJI obviously as you know push it once push it and hold it and there you go connecting and then what should happen, whoops, is the tablet will detect what uh, DJI device that you're going to be using. 
So when that goes to connected, uh, see, then we now got Mavic, way. But what we're also gonna do, we're gonna need to actually t turn the actual Mavic itself on because we're going to actually have to activate the craft. So we just need to clip the battery into the holder. Oop, in fact, let's fold the arms out, get a bit easier to get in there like that. And then once again, to turn it on, you just need to, well, obviously, you have that sticker out of the way. So to turn on, obviously, again, you need to push it, then push it again within two seconds and hold it. So push once, push hold, and then let go. You will hear the beeps, you'll get your little red lights on the arms. There we go. Now, if you'll notice here, did you see that bar now turn solid blue? That means we're good, we're connected. If that doesn't go, then uh, then obviously you might have, uh, it, you may have connection issues and to check your cables. Now, as you can see here, it's actually um, saying there's an inconsistent firmware file. It was basically saying it needs a firmware update, but do you know what? We're actually gonna come back to that. So I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll do a separate video on updating the firmware, but we can actually proceed. So we're gonna cancel that down, because I'll be honest with you, when new firmware updates come out, what I always do, I sit on the fence for two weeks. Don't jump on the latest firmware update, because if there's a bug or something in it, you could end up updating and then having to downgrade. So what I tend to do is keep an eye on social media and the forums, and if nobody's reporting any issues, then jump for it. So next one, now I'm working upside down here, but uh, next one we'll go, go to camera, and it's now gonna tell me that we need to activate our Mavic. Now, um, now if, you, if this is your first DJI product, you need to have a DJI account. So you can do one of two things. You can go onto the DJI website and just simply log in. That creates your account. But you can actually do it on the tablet as well. Now, as, I'm already, as I already have an account and I'm already logged in, it's not going to ask me for that part. So uh, when you see that pop up, you'll know what it is. So just click on Next. Uh, it just gives you loads of terms and conditions. Yes, I say my firstborn child to you. Uh, agree to that. There we go. Now you get a choice of name for your Mavic. Choose wisely as I'm not 100% sure whether you can actually change it or not. I know initially you couldn't, don't know whether DJ have ever changed that. So I would probably recommend you actually call it what it is. Because if you call it something like Pies Rock or something like that, and then you go to sell your Mavic, it's gonna look a little bit weird. So if we just go, Ma, remember I am upside down here. Mavic. Maybe we just call it Mavic Pro, uh, as it is one. There's a P, uh, the damn Argon, R, uh, oh. So we've got Mavic Pro, keep it simple, no point in confusing things. Continue. Um, now it's asking you what stick mode you want it in. Now um, the way it is is, um, it's kind of like left and right hand drive. I would generally go for mode two because that is the by far the most commonly used mode. What it just basically means is, is that like on your controller, for example, it would mean that say, you know, to, 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 to increase height would be on the left stick rather than on the right stick, that sort of thing. But as I say, I would stick with mode two, most commonly used. Um, C1, C2, uh, this is just the little buttons on the back of the controller. They're like little hot keys. Now these are customizable, so don't worry too much about, um, don't worry too much about what they're doing at the moment, but it's just telling you there, it's, so C1 would give you center focus and C2 would give you your video playback. But as I say, totally customizable, so don't worry about it. Um, this is the modes that you're gonna fly. Now I'm in the UK, so I'm going to need PAL. Uh, and then you, whether you want to have it in metric, so that would be meters per second or kilometers per hour. Uh, to be honest, I'll leave it on meters per second. Continue. Uh, now this is where um, it's got beginner's mode. So what that is, is um, when it's on beginner's mode, it'll limit it to 50 meters, sorry, 30 meters away and 30 meters high. So if you haven't flown a drone before, leave it on that mode. If you have, to be honest, just turn it off. If you do have it on, remember, you can actually take that off later on. You're not going to ruin it. Uh, now, uh, so this is the part where if you didn't have a DJI account, it would ask you to sign into one or create one. As I already have one, um, I'm just going to click, click activate and then it's going to activate. So as you see there, saying connecting to server. 
Right, so that's that done, uh, successfully activated. Uh, if you want to have a look through the tutorials, you can. Uh, it's also asking there to, you know, um, update the firmware, but as I say, I'm gonna do that in another video, so I'm just gonna continue on. Um, there's obviously a wee bit of blurb there about the DJI care, basically what it's saying, if you do decide to go for the DJI insurance care, you have to do it within 48 hours of your craft being activated. Read right into it, it um, it's one of these things, is it will work for some people, not for the others. Uh, have a good look at it, it's not quite, it, it's, to be honest with you, it's a little bit, I wouldn't say it's untransparent, but I think people sometimes think it's better than it is. You can't just unlimited, unlimitedly crash your Mavic and they'll give you a new one. It doesn't work like that. So as I say, have a wee look into that. Don't just automatically jump onto it. So that is pretty much all rocking and rolling. So we can now clip on, click on camera view. And as you can now see, uh, we do have that up and running. Now it comes up with a little sort of warning screen, it's just simply because the firmware is wanting to be updated, but I'm not going to update it just now as I said. So that's the craft pretty much all rocking and rolling. So what I'm now gonna do is we're now going to have a uh, look at, you know, clipping the props on and getting the actual craft ready. And then we'll go over in a bit more detail on the features of the app uh, and the actual controller, because obviously it's important that you know how that works. Oops, just took a picky.